Okay, good morning. Thank you for coming to the talk. Uh, how many of you here use uh, MySQL? <laughs> how many of you know that MySQL is now owned by Oracle? <laughs> how many of you plan to switch to another database? <laughs> is it a NoSQL solution? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about MariaDB so that maybe you don't have to switch away from MySQL. You can continue using it uh, just as you, your current apps are using it. Uh, I'm Colin Charles from uh, Monty Program. I work on MariaDB. Uh, formerly, I used to be at Sun Microsystems, just like Simon w was at, largely because they acquired our company, MySQL AB. And uh, previously, I also used to work on uh, the Fedora project and OpenOffice.org. Um, so I've been working with open source for over a decade, more than a decade. So here I aim to give you an update of what we've done with MariaDB and uh, discuss the larger MySQL ecosystem. How many of you have heard of MariaDB before this talk? OK. How many of you use MariaDB? <laughs> oh, a bunch of you. Awesome. <laughs> That is good news. How many are using MariaDB 5.2? 5.3, anybody? It's in beta? OK, wow. So there are a bunch of you. So maybe we can meet later and talk about um, some case studies. <laughs> so for, for those of you that are using MariaDB, the start of the talk is fairly basic. If you aren't using MariaDB um, and you're using MySQL currently, then you're probably going to want to hear the start of the talk as well. So what is MariaDB? Is it a branch with more features, better features, or a fork? And um, largely, it's not a fork. Um, you heard about LibreOffice and OpenOffice.org. And LibreOffice is clearly a fork of OpenOffice.org. The LGPL allows them to do that. Nobody knows if OpenOffice.org will mature as an Apache project. Um, MariaDB, on the other hand, is really just a branch. Because we continually merge with MySQL on a monthly basis when they make their code releases. And we keep on adding new features on top of it. So we're a more feature-filled MySQL. It is developed by the community. And uh, later, I'll share some stats as to how many people can commit to the code base. It is enhanced with many, many, many features. If you're using MariaDB 5.2, we've enhanced quite a number of features. But 5.3 is where the real changes are. And it's 100% backward compatible with MySQL. It is a drop-in replacement to MySQL. Uses the same connectors, uses the same uh, SQL dialect. So your apps that are currently speaking to MySQL can actually just automatically speak to MariaDB just by installing it. It's as easy as doing RPM or app get remove MySQL, installing MariaDB, starting it up. It reads the same data files. Reach same might and CNF. Why did we do this? Because MySQL, the database, was owned by MySQL AB, the company. MySQL AB, the company, was purchased by Sun Microsystems, who seemed to understand open source. However, Sun Microsystems wasn't doing so well. And even though they understood open source, they couldn't survive easily. So Oracle offered to buy them. So that's why um, we started it. Monty Program is just a sponsor of MariaDB. And uh, as uh, Simon says, we have community continuity. In the event that Monty Program does get purchased by another company, or if Monty Program is, does, is not the major contributor to MariaDB code base, um, the ownership of all MariaDB trademarks go to the next organization. It's also worth noting that the Maria captains, 64% of the people are um, Monty Program folk as in they're employed by the company to work with MariaDB, whereas 36% are community. The, this was actually an advantage to the community. It just grew recently in the last third quarter because we were hiring a few more people. So when Sun purchased us, we were very happy. When Oracle purchased uh, Sun, we all decided we spent a lot of our lives working against Oracle, so to speak, to actually make a nice database called MySQL compete. We included lots of enterprise features in MySQL 5.0. It took us three years to release 5.0. It took us another three years to release 5.1, because we kept on piling it on with enterprise features, including things like XML, XPART support, which next to nobody uses. 
but makes this enterprise ready. So we figured we spent so much time on this, we can't let Oracle just kill it. So um, we decided, uh, Widenius, being Michael Monty Widenius, decided to go create another company and, and create a product called MariaDB. MySQL, named after his first daughter, Miu, who's touring South America now. MariaDB, guess what? Named after his second daughter, Maria, who's little five-year-old girl. So MySQL has always been an open source product. It has never actually been an open source project. We've tried many times to get external contributions, but we usually end up hiring the person. We only succe successfully brought in one community patch throughout the entire life of MySQL, and that was the same, it was the much hyped about show profiles. Show profiles was feature created by the now Twitter D uh, D DBA, Jeremy Cole. The irony of that is Jeremy used to work at MySQL, so we weren't really bringing it in from the community. <laughs> MariaDB, on the other hand, has lots and lots of features that are coming in via the community. So if you can hack some C code, chances are lots of your features are going right in. Features from Twitter, Facebook, Google, TiVo, the eBay, the, the list of companies that are contributing code to MariaDB are very, very lengthy. They're not coming in just via via us. So as I said, we aim to be 100% compatible drop-in replacement. The most important thing for us is st stability. We like stable bug-free releases, so we never make a release of MariaDB with a known crashing bug. When, when MySQL 5.1 got released, there were some, some 500 bugs open in the database. Some of them were even marked critical, but it was released because corporate policy said, make a release now. We, d we never do that. We like to have timelines every six to nine months. We like to make a release. But if we can't make a release that's of good quality, we will not do, do so. And we are obviously fully GPL v2. We follow GPL v2 because MySQL is GPL v2, and it's unlikely to ever become GPL v3. We also send lots of our patches back to MySQL, which will make our merging easier, naturally. They occasionally do accept some of our code. Sometimes they put it in very much later release. That's OK. <clears throat> it is worth noting, though, that there is no NDB cluster storage engine. So if you are currently using MySQL cluster, you can't just switch to MariaDB. This is also true for MySQL. MySQL cluster is a separate product from MySQL. It's meant to be reintegrated at some stage, but at the moment it isn't. As I said earlier, the client libraries, server protocols, dialect, etc., they're all the same. Today, if you want to migrate from MySQL to MariaDB, you can actually literally have MySQL replicating to a MariaDB slave, and then promote the slave later to a master, and then get your master back into, onto MariaDB. It's really easy to make a migration. All data files are supported between similar versions. All connectors just work. So the regular PHP connector you use, the Rails connector you use, they all just work. We have some additional tools inside of MariaDB because we have a bunch of additional engines. It's so, so that is worth noting. And we've also recently started packaging MyTop, which allows you to do top-like uh, facilities for MySQL only. This is also worth noting is that we enable ExtraDB by default as opposed to InnoDB. ExtraDB is a modified version of InnoDB that is, that is meant to scale better. And this is realistically what powers Google's InnoDB usage, Facebook's InnoDB usage, and pretty much every other high performance website out there. You also notice little links here to something called the knowledge base. Every little point that I make is usually expanded in the knowledge base, so it's well worth checking out. February of 2010, we made our first release of MariaDB. This was MariaDB 5.1. It did not have many additional features. However, we spent a lot of time actually creating the external build system using BuildBot and all the VMs. Today, MariaDB is entirely automated in terms of builds, tests, upgrades, etc. And the best part is you can start a BuildBot instance as well. You just need bandwidth and lots of disk space. 
this is something that was not possible with MySQL and is still not possible with MySQL because you need an internal tool called push build. We had a lot of storage engines like ExtraDB, PBXT, Federated X, and the ARIA storage engine. Federated X, for example, allows you to write your current tables to a remote server via, via IP. This federated engine, for example, was used in Cisco IOS routers a long time ago, and probably still are in Cisco IOS routers, assuming Cisco is paying Oracle licensing fees. Federated X is the modified open source engine by the original author of federated. Put in lots, of, lots and lots of bug fixes. We are now close to 98% of test case coverage, something MySQL cannot claim to have. And we learned something from this pr other fork of MySQL called Drizzle. Anybody here heard of Drizzle or used Drizzle? Heard of Drizzle? Yes. Use Drizzle? Using Drizzle, too. This is the first time I've heard someone is actually using Drizzle in production. Oh, OK. All right, that's awesome. I will tell Brian. <laughs> So we learned that from Drizzle that you should remove uh, mutexes where possible, and we did remove a lot of mutexes. And if you now compile MariaDB with warnings all turned on, GCC or ICC, there are no more compiler warnings. So this means the code is more robust. It's unlikely to crash in any way, shape, or form. This is something that excites people that actually put MariaDB into data centers. Mentioned we ship extra DB. This is truly an enhanced version of InnoDB. When InnoDB was first written, and pretty much I would say more than 70% of all sites out there run InnoDB today, because InnoDB provides transactional support to MySQL. MySM doesn't isn't transaction safe, so isn't asset compliant. It's worth noting that when InnoDB was was first written, you had CPUs with you know one core and one CPU. Your memory that you that you had access to was, at most, you were lucky, was probably three gigabytes. You had 32-bit systems back then. Today, I would find it hard-pressed for you to buy a server that was only 32-bit and had less than four gigs of RAM. I think most laptops today come with four gigs of RAM and are 64-bit. So InnoDB wasn't meant to run on modern hardware, so ExtraDB includes a lot of fixes. Largely, they came out of Google and Facebook to scale on modern hardware. You can do things like um, ex extended compression. It uses many cores better. So you know, 16 cores are like the minimum today for servers. Uses memory more efficiently. 8, 16 gigs of RAM, very common. And um, if you want to reference architecture as to what database servers in high web and scale environments are today, check out Facebook's Open Compute project. Facebook is, o is open sourcing what their data center looks like so that they can get more commodity hardware cheaper, naturally. And you know, an extra DB is basically what powers most of Facebook. We also include Prime-based PBXT. Is anybody here running the database servers using SSDs? OK. So then Prime-based PBXT is a storage engine you want to hear about. Talking about storage engines a lot, uh, are you all aware that MySQL has storage engines? Who is not aware that MySQL has storage engines? OK, nobody. That's good. Tomorrow we'll talk about lots of storage engines in another talk. Anybody heard of PBXT before? Anybody use PBXT? <laughs> no. PBXT is transactional, supports foreign keys, is fully asset compliant. It was basically written in, at first and th in three months to compete against something called Falcon. Anybody here remember an engine called Falcon? <laughs> OK. Falcon is no more. PBXT is still around. And at one stage, it even performed much better than InnoDB. InnoDB in 5.5 has improved tremendously. PBXT is still improving slowly but surely. It uh, really makes sense when uh, you're using SSDs to use PBXT because it does write once with log-based storage, writes the data to the da database without first writing to the transactional log. SSDs have finite amounts of writes. This is an optimized way to do it <laughs> compared to InnoDB. InnoDB is, by and large, created for spinning disks. InnoDB, for example, supports 
raw disk mode, which there are people that use it when they run InnoDB on Windows platforms. But today, if, you, if you're deploying servers on Linux, you never ever use raw disk mode because you trust uh, a good file system and you trust your kernel. And typically, you trust XFS if you're running high bandwidth environments. What else do we put inside MariaDB 5.1? We extended the stats for the slow query log. And we also did process lists with microsecond precision. So today, your information schema, you can actually notice a little time MS which is time in milliseconds. We, we noticed uh, that microseconds were actually pretty important because today, today on modern CPUs, queries run, and sometimes you get, get it back in one second. And that's great, but you usually want microsecond precision to actually tune your queries. Show process list does this as well. And now you see things in microseconds. Very useful when you're tuning queries, when you're running explain against um, fairly lengthy query, and so forth. We also put in a bunch of new features. Table elimination is generally quite useful, largely because I think we're probably the only open source database that supports this. If you have highly normalized data, and sometimes this is generally referred to as anything more than third normal form, so we're in a Science Institute, I'm guessing database professors usually try to tell you to tune things to six normal form. In practicality, this does not happen. You have them at most at third normal form, and they actually perform really well. Um, sometimes you can actually resolve a query without ever accessing some of the tables it refers to. And a um, great example of this is available up here using the Sakila sample database. Also, how many of you are aware that Oracle has decided that they'd like to close source some features, one of which is known as the connection thread pool, <laughs> and the other one that is PAM auth authentication? <laughs> so some of you are aware that Oracle is closed sourcing some things. Uh, the good news is we've had pool of thread support, aka the, uh, the connection pool, since uh, MariaDB 5.1 in February 2010. So if you are having short, small running queries. This is very useful for you, because it uses a limited set of threads to handle all your queries. Now, the Oracle implementation is a little better in the sense that you can pause running queries. So it will work a little better for long running queries as well. They have opened up an API, and we plan to also improve our version of it so that you can pause long running queries. So. Um, all hail Oracle for actually creating the one that allows you to pause long running queries. But we've had the feature, and it's fully open sourced since February of 2010. We're expecting to see the connection pool show up in MySQL 5.6 Enterprise. MariaDB 5.2 came out in November of 2010. And we, the most, probably one of the most important features that we included in this was pluggable authentication support. We then donated the code back into MySQL, which is why they also have pluggable authentication. The beauty of pluggable authentication is that you can write plugins in a few hours or a few days with QA to ensure that you don't actually have to use the MySQL authentication system. Now, we don't provide a PAM plugin or an LDAP plugin or an Active Directory plugin, but we already have a work on an open source implementation for a PAM plugin that will work with MySQL, MariaDB, or even Pagona server. So realistically, um, don't worry about Oracle closed sourcing features, because the open source world is here to stay, and we're here to make sure we provide good stuff for you. The PAM plugin will be probably in MariaDB 5.3 as well as MariaDB 5.5 uh, relatively soon. So hang in there for that. We also updated the user statistics in, w in where we do client, user, index, and table stats. Very useful if you're running a web hosting company or if you're running large environments, again, like you know, Google, Facebook, and so forth. Because uh, one, one of the things the Facebook engineers tend to say is, we can fix the code base. If we see a long-running query, we can, we can go back into the code, find, find it, change the query, and slap the developer that did it. 
Domas Mitusas, ex MySQL, currently Facebook, says that a lot funnier because he's about yay high, and when he says you'll slap a developer, you'd actually laugh. We also included something called the segmented MyISM key cache. Now, every time you use MyISM and it needs to touch a key cache, it actually locks. Now, if you are using MyISM, and how many of you here are using MyISM? OK, that's pretty much all of you. You should already be running MariaDB because just for free, you get something up to you know, 40 to 250% improvement in performance if you're using MyISM. And lots of people still do use MyISM because MyISM is fast, even though it's not durable. And we have lots of benchmarks up there to show that it's much faster when you're going from 10 right up to even 100 queries and so forth. And we allow you to repeat such benchmarks at the knowledge base. Another interesting feature in 5.2 that we have is the Sphinx storage engine. How many of you here do full text search? How many here use Sphinx for full text search? Lucene? <laughs> you use stock MySQL full text search? <laughs> OK. Stock MySQL full text search is fast in 5.1 and greater, as in it's faster than what was available in 5.0. But it's nowhere near as fast as actually uh, a daemon like Sphinx or Lucene. The Sphinx people have al always had a storage engine called Sphinx SE. And it's been around for a few years. They've th we thought of in including it inside MySQL. But generally, it's never made it inside. And what Oracle doesn't make will not go inside MySQL in general. So we've included the Sphinx storage engine. And you can just do things, things as simple as this, just to create table engine equals Sphinx. And the connection is to the Sphinx daemon. Today, if you download MariaDB 5.2 and greater, as long as you have the Sphinx daemon installed, you will be able to see the Sphinx storage engine present. You can run queries in SQL. You don't need to learn how to query using Sphinx. You can also monitor it. And the most interesting feature about the Sphinx storage engine is you can actually search, get some results, and then join it with other tables. So this, is a, this, this feature alone is actually quite useful. We don't know of um, many people using the Sphinx storage engine publicly. Sphinx has a list of people actually saying that they use the Sphinx storage engine on their website. The largest website that we know that runs a very, very modified version of MySQL uh, called Wikipedia, um, they, do, they also don't use Sphinx. They use Lucene. But there is no Lucene storage engine, so we've only included Sphinx. So I'd encourage you to try out Sphinx if you're doing full text search. MariaDB 5.3 is where all the new cool features are. People that are all on about NoSQL, We've included some NoSQL features inside MariaDB 5.3. I'd like to also note that Oracle ha hasn't been doing too bad a job with regards to NoSQL. The next release of MySQL, probably 5.6, will have NoSQL access to InnoDB via memcache. So you can do put get operations using memcache that speak directly to InnoDB, bypassing handler and the SQL interface. So there will be memcache interfaces to both InnoDB and cluster in the next release. However, if you want some bleeding edge stuff, try out Handler Socket. Also has direct access to InnoDB or XDB. It's comp it, there is no SQL layer. It skips the handler interface completely, so it speaks directly to XDB. You can do simple crowd operations. And this was created at a company called DNA in Japan. They basically have seen from 450,000 queries per second on their workload to get 700,000 queries per second using Handler Socket. And since they make very popular games, they've decided that this should be open source. And many other people have benchmarked it and realized that it's really, really fast, because it bypasses the handler interface completely. We have modified the handler interface to make it faster, but it doesn't beat Handler Socket. So give Handler Socket a try. 5.3, even though it's in beta, is relatively stable. We see m a lot of downloads coming from 5.3 because people are realizing that it's actually OK. We even know of companies putting it in production. So while I'm not, rec not recommending you putting beta software into production, I do recommend you try it. Then there's also dynamic columns. 
this is something that we've wanted for a long time. Because if you're an e-commerce store, for example, you actually sell items that have different attributes, like t-shirts, mobile phones, and so forth. And dynamic columns provides different sets of virtual columns for each row in your table. Now, I have a very small example at the back. So if you're sitting at the back, you're unlikely to see this. But basically, what, what you can do is, ooh, this pointer is not sure. OK, is you can have things like type, price, length, list. And you can also maybe just select based on color. You can also update based on color. Things that you normally can't do without dynamic column support. We plan to also update MySQL's client, which at some point means we will probably have to update the connectors to support this in the on-the-wire protocol, because we're looking to get an IANA port number. And little modifications to the protocol help. But we won't break backward compatibility or ABI compatibility. We'll add it towards the end of the protocol. Dynamic columns is rather cool, well worth trying out. We have plenty of examples available um, on the knowledge base. So this, this feature alone is probably worth trying a beta piece of software out for. Group commit. Facebook is probably the largest user of group commit in the world today. They have had no choice but to write their own implementations of group commit. If you notice, this is stock MySQL. There is no group commit, so performance is, is bad. Facebook wrote version 1, performance dips, when you hit 256 concurrent clients. They also wrote version 2, some improvements. MariaDB 5.3. Relatively stable, even up to one or two four co uh, concurrent connections. And what is group commit, really? Every time you write to InnoDB or ExtraDB, to be durable, which is the D in ACID, you must call fsync. You must call fsync so it writes it to disk. Because in, in case something happens, like you lose power, your battery back, backup fails, to be durable, you write. Async calls are really expensive. So if you have parallel workloads, which most sites out there have, say anything more than three parallel workloads, hence the concurrent connections, you will realize that you can actually make one async call in a group. And this is what group commit actually does, is it makes one async call for several concurrent uh, connections. And we've been able to improve performance tremendously the more concurrent clients you have. It won't benefit you if you have 8, 16, maybe, or even up to 32. But it greatly benefits you when you have a lot of concurrent clients. The group commit that we have here is quite useful, so, so much so that it is likely that they will probably backport the group commit into the current release of MySQL that they are using. So this is well worth trying. To actually benchmark it, you have to enable sync bin log equals 1 and flush log at transaction commit. And uh, the best benchmark is the benchmark you yourself do not do. So this benchmark actually came out of Facebook. Facebook's uh, senior DBA op of operations, Mark Callahan, has a very popular page called Facebook at MySQL. He did the benchmark, comparing it against their, their versions of group commit. And this has been repeated again by Percona. So we have a feature that is very useful if you have parallel connections. I'd suggest you try this out if you have a very busy site. The other important thing is replication. We've done lots of work to improve replication. Binary log events, we've done uh, checksums. We backported this from uh, MySQL 5.6. It is currently unreleased. Also. If you happen to want to migrate, you want to start up a new slave, for example, now you can do this. MySQL dump single transaction, master data. It's a non-blocking backup when you do single transaction. It's only one transaction. And then you can load up a slave fairly easily and then just do something like this. Start transaction with consistent snapshot 
from bin log position and you give it a number and voila you have very very good replication that you can't get with MySQL today. We also do row-based replication for tables with no primary key. Now this is a really bad idea especially if you're using InnoDB but we realize lots of people do this. InnoDB itself assigns a primary key even if you have no primary key and it's an internal value six bytes long. Six bytes is, is a lot when it comes to performance and how your data is stored contiguously on disk. So I'd highly recommend you to always have primary keys for your tables. However, if you don't, we're now also doing row-based application for those tables. Because funnily enough, in production, people actually create tables without primary keys. So um, there's a funny story from a Craigslist DBA, Jeremy Zawadny, who actually said that when he, because Craigslist is now so old, is Craigslist popular here? I don't know. People use Craigslist at all? <laughs> Never? Well, it's really popular in the US, and it's basically what's disrupted the newspaper classifieds industry. They've grown so much over the years that when they do an alter table now, um, they did an alter table and they found out that historical data was giving them something like uh, three months to make an alter table. Three months is unacceptable. Not knowing it takes three months is even more unacceptable. So we now actually have the uh, progress reporting, so it'll actually tell you how many percent of your alter table is done. We don't expect you to wait three months for an alter table, but believe me, uh, when your databases grow large in size, these things do happen. There is the online schema change now, which you can actually access via a PHP tool. However, you still need to alter tables and you have lots of data, it takes a lot of time. So we have progress reporting that will en ensure that you don't wait in vain. So for that, we also had to change MyTop. And that's why we now include MyTop. Also, in MariaDB 5.3, we spent some 10 years, actually, from MySQL days to now working on improving the optimizer. And if you run a very, very large site, you probably don't use the optimizer very much because you force the parts, you use optimizer hints, and you force parts to actually get to your query. However, for most people, you don't force the optimizer. How many of you here force your queries through the optimizer? OK. What site do you run? <laughs> you seem to have a pretty large installation. <laughs> ah. <laughs> We're well aware of Booking.com, so you work with Chris. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> OK, so Booking.com is another fairly large website. <laughs> yes. yes. I don't know how much I can say because they're recording videos, so I won't say too much. <laughs> they work with Multiprogram quite closely. <laughs> so we actually improved a lot of stuff in the optimizer. We spent over 10 years <laughs> working on it. And um, some of these changes will appear in MySQL 5.6. They are generally different implementations, and currently, because 5.3 is in beta, as, as is 5.6 is in beta, we are now also basically running some benchmarks against um, 5.3 and 5.6 so that we can compare apples with apples to beta releases. And we're going to see which is the better implementation. If ours is not as good as, the, as Oracle's, we will take the Oracle implementation. If ours is better, we're going to give ours back so that they can improve the implementation. But the one thing that really does excite me most is subqueries. Subqueries finally materialize inside of MariaDB, something that you could not do in MySQL generally. We materialize all subqueries now as long as it's not correlated. If you are a MySQL user, you will realize that you will never use subqueries. You always rewrite your subqueries. However, if you're migrating from another database, chances are you're already using subqueries. And, use, and if you're going to use MySQL, Subqueries generally don't materialize. MariaDB subqueries, they do. DBD, DBT3 is an open source benchmarking um, standard that you can all use. Postgres makes use of this. MySQL makes use of this and so forth. Check it out. We use a 29 gigabyte extra DB database with 60 million line items using the data set that comes out of DBT3 as well. And you'll notice, sorry that it's really small. 
um, in MariaDB 5.2, which is basically based on any MySQL version, you will realize that a simple query for orders from customers with negative balance on the data set, and you can run this yourself, takes 45 seconds with MariaDB 5.2. But with MariaDB 5.3, it takes 0.43 seconds. <clears throat> so it's, it's 100 times faster running a regular DBT3 query. Finding customers with top balances in their nations, MariaDB 5.2. We stopped running it after one and a half hours because we know it will never materialize, ever. 5.3, 3.2 seconds. So that is basically infinitely faster. Anything that makes use of subqueries today will be infinitely faster if you're running MariaDB 5.3, even though it's in beta. You just need to switch on the optimizer switches. We turned everything off by default in 5.3, so you will not notice it but when we do make a release candidate, we're going to turn all the optimizer switches on, because we figured that we've already gone through a lot of the optimizer bugs in 5.3.0, 5.3.1, and 5.3.2. So the next release will have lots and lots of optimizer fixes just turned on. So it should just work faster. We also included another thing in 5.3.2, which was just released about three weeks ago, called the user feedback plugin. We call this phone home back in MySQL, and we never, we've, there's never been a release, sadly. This user feedback plugin works with any MySQL because it is really just a plugin. It is disabled by default, but we would, consi we would like to ask for people to just turn it on, maybe. You can see what data comes out of it. It's just basically doing select version, and um, it also takes into account your IP address, so we know that you're coming from a certain country. Uh, it's important for us to track wh where you are potentially using MariaDB so we know where to spend most resources. However, if you are a support organization, you could extend this to actually put it in for your clients so that it's turned on automatically and you could then maybe also get more information from the server. We take no information besides the fact that you're running MariaDB and where you come from. And we put all the data up online so you can see how many servers are running MariaDB where. Well worth trying out and easily extendable if you happen to be a services organization. Fully open source, naturally. Everything we ship is fully open source. We're also very open. Uh, our mailing lists are on Launchpad. The internals MySQL mailing list, for example, is completely dead. Our code hosting is on Launchpad. We do not have an internal tree that we sync with an external tree later. This is what's happening with MySQL nowadays, is that there is an internal tree. And only after people complain significantly will there be a push to the external tree. So sometimes there could be a four-day to five-day delay before you see a MySQL release and then the actual source tree. You can still get the source code. They still comply with the GPL. But you won't get the bizarre history, for example. The bugs database is also completely open for MariaDB. This is now not true for MySQL. Bugs at mysql.com is becoming a lot quieter because they're encouraging you to become an Oracle customer. And you have a nice uh, Oracle application. It's written in Flash, from what I understand. Starting costs uh, 5,000 US dollars <laughs> per database. And you get to use this very nice Flash application to submit your bugs. And ironically enough, the late, latest release of uh, MySQL 5.5, 5.5.8, I think, was the first release that referenced a closed bug. So if you are a Linux distribution shipping MySQL today, you may not even be getting the bugs that are open to you, because they're clearly only open to Oracle people, other Oracle customers. Starting seats, $5,000. Plus, you have to use Flash. We're also on Hash Maria on Freenode, so this is where we do lots of our development chat. It's like our water cooler. Um, we don't have an internal IRC channel or internal IRC network like we had at MySQL. So it's fairly open. Please hop on, join us. We're completely open source in the sense that we've open sourced the work log. And at one of my talks a while back, someone actually said, oh, I'd like this feature done. So we actually got the work log 
happening while I was talking from like literally from now till the end, someone actually created a feature request and even put money up to actually get it going. You can now fund it via bounties. You can also vote on it. Voting is free. And we will see if we should implement something or someone else in the community who wants to work on it will implement something inside of MariaDB. It's very easy. Pretty much everything that is implemented here eventually ends up in MySQL. We have the knowledge base. And the knowledge base is dual licensed, GNU free documentation license, and Creative Commons share like, non commercial. This is useful because the MySQL documentation is excellent, dev.mysql.com slash doc, but it is copyright Oracle. It can be closed sourced if they want to at some stage. And we've seen this happen with Red Hat, for example. Red Hat's got excellent documentation which they've now closed sourced largely because they don't want Oracle, not, not because they don't want CentOS people reading it, because they don't want Oracle people, Oracle Enterprise Linux people reading your stuff. So we don't want this to happen with MySQL, so we've already started creating uh, extensive documentation. We bought the rights to a SQL 99 complete, really. The authors were Peter Gulutsan and Trudy Pelzer. They used to actually work at MySQL. They just recently left Oracle. Uh, so, we have, so if you're ever interested in the SQL 99 standard, please, plenty of reading material for you up here. If you want to know how to use MySQL, MariaDB, etc., plenty of questions. Up there is a little search, powered by Sphinx, so it does full text search, <laughs> naturally. We have to eat our own dog food. Deployments are plenty. Um, Spam Experts is actually a local company based here. They've migrated over 300 servers from MySQL 5.0 to MariaDB 5.1. They've recently also migrated to MariaDB 5.2, but we didn't get a quote from the CTO because you know, they had no problems. Uh, there were problems migrating from MySQL 5.0 to MySQL 5.1, so we've actually got a better upgrade path now if you're still running MySQL 5.0. Uh, hosting providers love running us because suddenly they are web hosting servers feed more clients. Who doesn't like making more money off your clients? Uh, Travelblog.org made a switch. Their optimization time went from 24 minutes down to 4 minutes. PAP.fr, fairly large website in France, made the switch. Uh, web tech, Paybox. Jelastic is a platform as a service environment. They just started offering MariaDB two months ago. And it is already now the second most requested database. They released, a, released some feedback showing that, yes, while MySQL is a very uh, important database, MariaDB is there, as is MongoDB and Postgres on a platform as a service uh, database solution. So Jelastic, well worth checking out. You can get MariaDB fairly easily from the site. We provide. YUM repositories, as well as app repositories for, both, for Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, RHEL. You can also get it inside some distributions like Gentoo, FreeBSD, Homebrew on Mac, Arch Linux, and so forth. We have a fairly extensive list here. It's al also inside OpenSUSE via the build service. So it's fairly easy to get MariaDB and get started. We're uh, looking at implementing GIS in the future. We clearly want to look at that market because uh, there are people that would like more GIS features inside that Postgres does provide, but they'd like not to have some of the data uh, mirrored inside Postgres. We're also realizing merging takes a lot of time nowadays. So we, for example, are now starting the MySQL 5.6 merge now, at this very moment, even before it gets released. Different implementations, like the optimizer stuff, are, exist. Like now there's double work. Oracle does some work. We do some work. We'd like to never have double work because that's so against the hacker's ethos. You never do something twice. And we've uh, definitely faced uh, issues about getting into Linux distributions. For example, Fedora and uh, Enterprise Linux, EPEL, their uh, packaging policy basically states that if you are a drop-in replacement, we don't really like you. And now we're 
talking to Spot, who actually makes this policy to actually sort of work around an alternative method to get inside. So um, distribution policies, for example, make it difficult for us to go in because we are a drop-in replacement to MySQL. They don't like us conflicting with their core packages, so to speak. Um, similar inside Ubuntu Debian, so we're always looking for help to get inside other distributions because there clearly is demand. There are bug reports saying, hi, when are you going to package MariaDB? But we just don't have a straight entry path, which is why we're also trying to maybe not be a drop-in replacement for distributions, as in getting an INA port number and actually not you know, replacing MySQL, but working alongside MySQL. We have a book. <laughs> Just got released. MariaDB Crash Course, very basic book. Started selling, I think, about a month ago. Um, it's also based very much similarly on MySQL Crash Course, if you've read the book. And um, we, I always like to look back at um, MySQL's history. And MySQL, it took some several years before we got our first book in 1999, I think. I mean, from 95 to 99 was quite long. We've been out since 2010, so we hope that uh, if we, by having a book, uh, this, the progress increases for us. Uh, people do ask me what multiprogram does, because we back MariaDB, and we just do NRE engineering, and we work for on both MySQL and MariaDB, we don't support end users. There are many capable service providers that support um, MariaDB. Naturally, um, these capable service providers do not include Oracle. Um, Percona, FromDual, OpenQuery, SoftMethod, SkySQL. SkySQL and FromDual, I believe, uh, and, and SoftMethod are very, very popular inside of Europe. So no worries in terms of getting support. They do the whole phone call, email, etc. They do all the level one, level two support. But if you have, say, a crashing bug in MySQL or MariaDB or it won't start for some reason or anything, then they contact us and we do the level three support. We're on social media. We just started this whole social media push. So if you happen to be on Facebook or Twitter, please follow us. Uh, I noticed Tidos Upside also mentioned, um, you know, we're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so forth. So we're also there. <laughs> Tomorrow, I talk about all the MySQL storage engines that are available out there today. today and which you may want to use. MySQL is probably the only database in where you have to mix and match storage engines. You don't just use one like any other database. So please join me tomorrow. It's somewhere in this area. And I have some time for questions. I believe I have five minutes for questions. Do you have any questions to ask me? <laughs> oh, yes, you first, and then you. So for that, we would need some uh, engine-independent foreign keys. That is, that is a work log that we plan to have as well. So not, uh, not so as of yet. Is a lot of money in it and someone might make it? Yes. In fact, uh, this is something even uh, Oracle has said, stated that they, they want to fix, but they don't know when. But yes, this is something that we would like to have. And it requires foreign key support to be engine-independent, as opposed to currently foreign keys are actually handled inside the engine. So feature request, yes. And you can donate money to make it happen. Actually, you can pledge to donate money. You don't donate the money first. You just if I build the feature, do I get the money? Yeah, if you build the feature, you get the money. Exactly. That's exactly how it works. And we've successfully paid people to build features. It's worked out pretty well. People like uh, university students enjoy doing this because they're like, oh, look, I can do this in summer. It's quite handy. We, of course, QA and stuff. But yeah, you get the money. The pledged money. You had a question. Right. Uh, NDB cluster, the storage engine itself, is not included in stock MySQL. So we also don't include it because we follow stock MySQL. Um, come, I believe, uh, MySQL 5.6 and NDB 7.3. They're planning to merge it back again. And when they merge it back again, we will support it. So that's the only reason why we don't support NDB cluster. In fact, uh, NDB cluster has been rebased with a more modern version of MySQL in 7.2. 
Uh, I mean, previously, NDB cluster was based on MySQL 5.0, and they went on doing their own thing, which is why we don't include it. So MySQL 5.1 onwards does not include NDB cluster, and we're hoping that at some stage, which is possibly 5.6, we'll include it, and we will have support for it again. Any other questions? Oh, yes, you. Signal resignal support. There is basic signal resignal support, but not extensive. Okay. So That's something that came with the, even uh, MySQL 5.5, basic signal resignal support. We have basic signal resignal support. Okay. We have every, everything MySQL has, we, we have to. <laughs> Right. So as you know, our stored procedure support are also not very hot, right? <laughs> but we, well, I mean, MySQL stored procedure support is also not very good. It's, it's, it's there, but it's, yeah. it's rudimentary compared to other databases. But uh, yes, uh, wh one thing that I probably should, should mention is uh, MySQL 5.5 has that. Uh, MariaDB 5.5 is also out in alpha. You can actually get it at Launchpad now. So basically, that, that took a long time for, for merge. And I think that's actually quite important for booking. MySQL 5.5 in alpha is, and MariaDB 5.5 in alpha. It's uh, available at Launchpad. We plan to actually make both GA, 5.3 and 5.5 GA. Um, possibly, uh, we're going to make a release candidate in December. And then we're going to GA both, possibly by April next year. Usually, our targets are always to do re releases by April. So we do have signal resignal support. It's just not in 5.3, it's in 5.5. Yes? See, that is something uh, Oracle's working on in 5.6, so we plan to also have that in 5.6. But if you think it's an important feature to have in 5.5, as in a backport, we can definitely work something out. And I'm sure you know how to contact Chris, too. <laughs> contact us. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a question as well? Or? No. Yes? Why is, why is why are we making non-commercial documentation? In the event that Oracle makes their documentation closed source, we will always have open source documentation. So you, you and um, it's, we followed the Creative Commons exactly the way that would make it uh, shippable inside Debian. But the reason why we also put non-commercial there is so that you don't take, you don't print the whole knowledge base out and sell it as a book, which, Yeah, because they've actually changed the backend search engine. So uh, yeah, it's now, it's now using some. It used to be a Google appliance at dev.mysql.com. But ever since Oracle's taken over, they scrapped the Google appliance. So now you're better off doing site colon dev.mysql.com slash doc and what, whatever you're looking for. But you can also use our knowledge base, which has a ton of knowledge inside of it. And it's open source. People are contributing it to, to it, just like Wikipedia. And people are also translating it. So if anybody wants to translate, it's a great entry path into you know, contributing to an open source documentation. We have got, I think, Brazilian, Portuguese, Korean, French, and it's basically all done by a community of volunteers. So we would love to have Dutch. <laughs> OK, I think uh, we are pretty much out of time. So thank you for listening. Um,